name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I don't know how many of you have been to Zion National Park in southwest Utah. It's an incredible park. Uh, there are these magnificent cliffs on both sides, the river flowing right through it. And there's a famous hike there called Angel's Landing. And this hike is, I looked up the statistics, it's 5.4 miles, 1,500 foot elevation gain, so it's a very steep hike, but that's not what makes it famous. The last quarter mile is walking along a razorback of bedrock until you get to this Angel's Landing, which is perched, again, 1,500 feet below the, the valley floor. And this little razorback that you're following along is at times about five feet wide with cliffs on both sides. And they do have a railing, a chain, that you can hold on to, but there's only a chain on one side. How many of you would like to go and do this hike? <laughs> some are excited by it, and some of you are fearful at the thought of it. Uh, it has a lot of, shall we say, exposure, as it's described in hiking and mountaineering. Exposure is a euphemism for you're going to fall and die if you're not careful. <laughs> so you've got exposure on both sides. But this image is so perfect for our spiritual life. Because our spiritual life really is a razor's edge that we follow along. Now I don't mean that salvation is a razor's edge as though God is judging, uh, judging strictly and quick to condemn to hell. That's not what I mean. Some people have that wrong idea of God, but that's not our God. Though some of us may imagine him that way, and some preachers may talk in that way. So I'm not saying that salvation is a razor's edge, that you can fall into hell that quickly. Not at all. Because our God is quick to forgive, eager to save, abounding in mercy and patience and forbearance, as our prayers and hymns repeat again and again. When I say that our spiritual life is a razor's edge, it's because of what the devil is doing. He's always trying to pull up us off into one way or another. And this doesn't mean that immediately we are cast into hell. Not at all. God desires us to be back on that path. So he's always working to bring us back to this narrow path. But the image is important because it's not as though if I'm here, I'm in the safe place and over there is the danger. It's over there is the danger and I'm here, but if I back up too much... I will be in another danger. This is the image that we must have. And we see this in so many different situations in our life. You think of a situation where a spouse or a friend or a coworker frustrates you. So you fall. How are the different ways you could fall up? You could fall by lashing out, by anger, by verbal abuse, maybe even being physical. Or you could just foment inside of yourself and keep the grudge there and not do anything externally. Or you could hold on to the resentment for days and weeks and months and bring it up in an opportune moment. Or you could play the martyr, you could suffer. And that's the, the role of pride, to disdain the other person and to say, I am the righteous person and I'm enduring this wrong. That's just one example of the many ways and the many situations in our daily lives, especially with those who are near and dear to us, where we have many different potential pitfalls around us. And for each and every one of us, these contours and the cliffs are different. They're our own spiritual journey. So one pitfall for me may not be a pitfall for another person. Are you more prone to anger or less? Do you care a lot about pleasing others or do you not care as much? Is it difficult to forgive and easy to keep resentment or is it not? All of these things describe what our own personal journey along that razor's edge looks like. But the hike is called Angel's Landing, fittingly, because our hike is to the place of the angels, to the kingdom of God. And that journey is unique to each and every one of us. So today and next week in Theology 101, I'll be talking about some very uh, difficult topics about sexuality, about gender, about identity. This week I'll be talking about sexuality, and then the next week I'll be talking about gender and identity. 
And I'm talking about these issues because they're issues that we're encountering everywhere, in our families, among acquaintances, in work, in society. And how do we face this? Well, in Theology 101, I'll talk about the church's teachings on these things. And a little spoiler, you will be surprised by what you hear, so please do come. It's not what you think it is. But as we encounter these issues in our daily lives, day in and day out, we must know our own personal contours and cliffs so we don't fall into temptation. Remember, St. Paul said in Galatians, right after he described the fruits of the Spirit, he said, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in trespasses, you who are spiritual, restore him in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you too be tempted. These are very important words for us. Where is the razor's edge for me? Where will I fall off the cliff if I step too far? The cliffs are on all sides because in the words of St. Peter, your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. This is why we have a razor's edge that we're walking along. We live in a world with so much sin and sinful ways of living that are portrayed as okay in our culture. Whenever you en we encounter someone who's living in a sinful way, whether it's a couple that's living together, a friend who does unethical work, someone having an affair, or some other sinful life, we face the razor's edge and the cliffs on either side. Let me describe these two cliffs specifically. There's the one cliff of misplaced empathy. We have someone in front of us whom we love, who is sinning, and so we want to empathize with them. But our empathy is misplaced because our empathy as we are not aware, as we're not vigilant, it becomes joining in, accepting, participating. On the other side is the cliff of harsh judgment, where we say that person is sinning, I reject them, I walk away from them. So with misplaced empathy, the words of St. Paul apply, as I just said, if a man is overtaken in tres trespasses, you who are spiritual, Restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. It's not easy to be around someone who is living in sin. But by God's grace, with his strength, we can have the right kind of compassion. Because a godly compassion does not say, the situation's okay. Everything is fine. That's not godly compassion. Godly compassion recognizes the deep trauma and wounding that is occurring and also has love. So with harsh judgment, that other cliff, if you will, is where we want to not love the person anymore. It's easier that way. And our Lord's words apply to us. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. So I mentioned these two because, as I mentioned when I talked about the angel's landing hike, there's only one chain. And what you need to know is, where is the cliff that I'm more prone to fall off in? Some of you, it's easy to say, that person is sinful, I want to be away from them, I don't want to be around them. And so the answer to that is greater compassion. And for others of us, the compassion just comes right up. We see the person mired in sin, and we want to have compassion. But in doing so, and not having the wisdom and the discernment, we fall in that other way, which is to not still see it as sin. If I have a family member who's living in sin and my inclination is for to, to pronounce judgment and tell other family members how I feel about it, then my greater temptation is the harsh judgment. If on the other hand, my greater temptation is that I lack discernment, then I need to know that side of the cliff as well. We need to know about ourselves so that we don't fall. Oftentimes the paradox is that we need to move toward the opposite cliff. We know where our weakness is so that we can seek out the opposite. If I struggle with judging, I need more compassion. If I struggle with misplaced empathy, I need to have better judgment. So how do we live on the razor's edge, especially in regards to these difficult situations that we face? I'll give you the two profound tools of the church. You ready for this? Humility 
and repentance. Humility and repentance. Why is humility so essential? Because I have to recognize I can be misled. I can look at things in a wrong way. I can see things and fall like St. Paul says, considering myself lest I also be tempted. Humility is that way that says everywhere around me there's danger. I just need to hold on closely and stay right on the path, look down at my feet and take those steps forward. Now repentance is for when we weren't cautious enough and we weren't humble enough. So we fell off the cliff. Well, guess what? The good news, this isn't like real life or spiritual life. It's actually much more serious than that because we have a loving God who desires to pull us right back up out of that fall. So he's there, always, ready for us. The evil one leads us around. We miss our steps. We fall down. It's like the Lord has this huge rope and he pulls us right back up. But guess what? He can't pull us back up if we don't realize we're falling. He cannot pull us back up if we don't realize that we're falling. This is why we must have repentance. We must see our sin so that we can come out of that. I think of this hike in a beautiful way in terms of our spiritual life because there's the end, there's the journey, or I should point this way. There's where I'm going. And there our loving Lord is with all of the angels. And I'm walking along this treacherous path. But as I'm walking along this path, I look down. I know that I can fall. So I keep my focus on my steps. That's my humility. And if for some reason I look up, I get deluded, I forget, I fall, it's okay. Because I can repent. I can always repent. And you see, this is why ultimately, this is what we proclaim at Pascha, the devil is powerless. He is powerless if we have the ability to repent. So my brothers and sisters, find your journey along this perilous path. And in this journey, always look to humility and repentance as your two weapons that make you